Paid leave is really paid stay, the opportunity for <laughs> a limited stay with an aging parent, a new baby, or to deal with a medical problem. Through the highs of new life and the lows of a loss, caregiving can put life on hold, but it shouldn't put a paycheck on hold also. With 114 million Americans not having a day of paid family leave today, we need a new, bold national paid leave policy that would allow people to receive a portion of their paycheck for family and medical leave reasons. Thanks to the dedication of my good friend, the able Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro, we have just such a proposal, a national paid family and medical leave policy that she's been working on for almost a decade originally introduced uh, in 2013 as the Family Act. I'm pleased to be a co-sponsor of that along with many of our colleagues. Uh, it would recognize, it was actually in, reintroduced this year on the anniversary of the Family and Medical Leave Act, that while that's very valuable uh, protection now, that three months of no pay is not a formula for success in dealing with these issues and that we need a program that does provide some compensation to those who have the need for family and medical leave. Indeed, I think our existing legal structure kind of takes us back to the Mad Men era. Uh, we do not have American families these days that are reliant, in many cases, on a male breadwinner alone or a sock hop. Women's wages today uh, provide uh, really the key supporting wages for many families. Uh, about 80% of African-American mothers, about half of Latino, Latina mothers, and 46% of white mothers are key family breadwinners. Without a federal policy in areas that have totally indifferent state governments like the state of Texas, the only hope for relief has come from progressive cities like San Antonio and Austin that have developed local uh, sick leave policies uh, that have been now under sustained attack from indifferent uh, state Republican leadership. The ability uh, for someone you love to have access should be as universal as access to health care. Unfortunately, uh, we have some very fundamental differences about access to health care, just as we do access to family leave. And I think it's, it's very personal. I think of the story of Alyssa from San Antonio, who found uh, herself trapped uh, when her mother was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, she kept saving up what sick time and vacation days that she had for a last minute emergency. But when she finally got the emergency call to leave, uh, it was the last day of her mother's life. Uh, people shouldn't face that kind of crisis. Now, I do agree uh, with our Republican witness today and with my Republican colleagues that the idea, uh, which are the only ideas that I think have been advanced by Republicans not here in the House but in the Senate, by Mr. Rubio, I believe a bill Ms. Ernst has, the only Republican ideas are to undermine retirement security uh, in order to provide some limited protection for people with family and medical leave. And that is a real step backward. We can have both strong retirement security and security for these families. I would just ask in closing, Ms. Gupta, a Republicans talk about their uh, thin veneer on their major giveaway to the wealthy and corporations uh, concerning providing a tax credit for employers that are already providing some leave. Doesn't that approach uh, really leave out most people of color uh, and many poorer citizens of, of all uh, ethnicities? And can you really point to any good it's accomplished in terms of increasing the number of workers who have access to employer-sponsored paid leave through what I think is a, a backward policy that they're advocating? Well, thank you, Congressman, and I really appreciate how you uh, describe paid family medical leave as critical paid stay. Um, you are absolutely correct. Uh, you know, 
what we see is that um, based on the numbers on based on numbers around access, that the majority of private sector workers, again, 84%, have no access to paid family leave. And again, that's worse for, um, for the lowest wage workers. Uh, this has tremendous impacts on workers of color. We know that 60% uh, of African American, 62% uh, of black and 73% of Latino workers um, are ineligible or cannot afford to take unpaid leave. So, Having um, just relying on tax policies or relying on other incentives that are focused on businesses, it's just not enough, or just state strategies. We leave huge gaps in access um, by, economic, um, by economic level, um, by race, by ethnicity, and by region. And really, the only thing we have that is going to help low-wage workers, especially workers of color, is a universal, comprehensive, Thank the inclusive Thank you. family medical leave. Thank you so much. Thank the okay. lady. Let me recognize the gentleman from Nebraska, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our uh, panel of witnesses uh, today. Uh, it's, I think this is an important topic that we have a discussion about. Uh, let me first say that I believe uh, paid family leave does have broad support, and I, I can't